Well, I'm going to do something a little different today. I, I don't know about you, but I get a little, at least putting together PowerPoints, I get a little tired of those. So I'm going to try something new. Basically, when I hit go, I've got to go. And we're going to keep rolling for exactly 30 minutes. And uh, then certainly at the end of that, I think if we have any time for questions, um, I'd love to have a discussion or if that's an opportunity a little bit later. Before we get started, Shannon mentioned the uh, Global Sustainable Tourism Council. And for the first time in the history of the world, we have an effort behind a, uh, a common understanding of what sustainable tourism means. And I would encourage every one of you in this room to join the council because as a member, you are a driver and an active participant in steering the shape of sustainable tourism worldwide. So remember this, this address, www.gstcouncil.org. Check out the website, join us today, be a member, be a participant in the future of tourism and travel. So my talk today is a culmination of interest based on the work we do at the University of Utah, the International Ecotourism Society, and the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. As we all know, world tourism has grown significantly in the past 50 years. It is now recognized as the planet's largest industry with sizable economic benefits. With over a billion international tourists having traveled in 2012, Tourism remains one of the highest industries that are continually growing, accounting for 9% of the global GDP and one in every 12 jobs as a result of balancing its economic, social, and environmental objectives and responsibilities is now pivotal. For better or worse, tourism plays an increasingly important role in global affairs, Tourism connects all sectors of communities while at the same time is dependent upon increasingly linked to a healthy planet. Mr. Talib Rafai of UNWTO expressed this impact when he said, we can never forget that one billion tourists is a major responsibility, a responsibility to protect people and places visited. To address the complexities of a healthy planet, the Millennium Development Goals were identified as a set of specific targets to be achieved by 2015, just around the corner. Over the past couple of years, together with colleagues from all over the world, we've had the opportunity to explore sustainable tourism's contribution to addressing some of the Millennium Development Goals. I would like to take this opportunity to present some of our key findings from our book and highlight the future challenges and opportunities for ecotourism and sustainable tourism's contribution to supporting and meeting these goals. The commitment put forward by the Millennium Development Goals called for the international community to rally around an expanded vision of poverty reduction and pro-poor growth that situates human development at the center of social and economic progress. It also recognized the critical role of biodiversity conservation plays in supporting these concepts particularly the dependence of the poor on natural resources. If you think about it, out of any industry, sustainable tourism has the opportunity to address the intricate balance of social, environmental, and economic efforts to support positive change from a very local to a very global perspective. The GSTC, in contemplating the principles of sustainable tourism and the effort behind the establishment of the Global Sustainable Criteria, which, sits, which now sets the global standard for sustainable tourism as a unprecedented movement towards utilizing tourism as a global engine which can support millennium development campaigns. So let's explore these goals and examples and connections with tourism. The goal to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger addresses cutting in half the proportion of people living on less than a dollar a day and those who suffer from hunger. In, 2000, in 2011, the official poverty rate in the U.S. was 
which equates to about 46.2 million people living in poverty. Even more concerning today, 50% of the world's population live on less than $2.50 a day, which leaves 3 billion people in this situation. Local economic effects of tourism are determined by the share of tourism spending in the local economy, as well as the amount of the result indicated in direct economic activities. Our research demonstrated that increasing the involvement of local communities, especially the poor, in tourism's value chain can contribute to the development of the local economy and to poverty reduction. According to the UNEP and UNWTO's Green Economy Report, the extent of direct benefits to communities and poverty reduction will largely depend on the percentage of tourism needs that are locally supplied, such as products, labor, tourism services, and increasingly green services in energy and water efficiency and waste management. And there was increasing evidence that more sustainable tourism in rural areas can lead to a more positive, poverty-reducing effort. The important thing here is that international tourism ranks fourth after fuels, chemicals, and automotive products in global exports, with an industry value of US $1 trillion a year accounting for 30% of the world's commercial services and 6% of total exports, exports overall. It is estimated that one job in the core tourism industry creates about one and a half additional indirect jobs in the tourism-related economy. The sheer size of the sustainable tourism industry can empower positive economic change. Further, when we can cre recreate the tourism industry as sustainable, this involves energy improvements in water and waste management systems, as well as social and economic benefits. Tourism can reinforce the employment potential with increased local hiring and sourcing and significant opportunities in which tourism is oriented toward local culture. Despite this optimism, we found that there are still a number of issues that need addressing. These include the need for proceeds to be equitably distributed, to curtail the influence of cultural brokers, and to move towards the development of community-based tourism that respects traditional cultures and structures and at the same time maximizes equitable distribution of revenues. One area that needs further research is looking at the impacts of pro-poor tourism on the processes of good governance. While many of our case studies demonstrated that uh, partnership opportunities exist between the private sector and public sector to mobilize funding for small and medium enterprises with local protected area agencies to develop unique tourism infrastructure and unique experiences for tourists. Further, to avoid the problems of long-term careful planning is needed as we implement tourism uh, projects in developing countries. There is a need for careful market research or business planning as part of the planning process. And there are many miscommunications and corruption issues. There's also a need for flight schedules to be on time and limits. Uh, there are currently limits to an ability to effectively enter into global distribution systems. And rather than to achieve piecemeal approaches to tourism developments for poverty reduction, there is a need for a more strategic approach by creating partnerships with the private sector and linking local people to opportunities in mainstream tourism, not just as niche tourism, but as addressing and assessing main market blockages. Another Millennium Development Goal is to achieve universal primary education, which is to ensure that all girls and boys complete primary school. Education for All reports that one-fifth of young people in developing countries, nearly 200 million people, fail to complete primary school and still lack skills for work. When considering tourism's contribution to education, empowerment, and building community capacity, several of our case studies pointed back to key success factors, which were evident for economic benefits and impacts in Africa. These included capital investments, increased yields per tourist, job creation, market linkages, commercial opportunities for small businesses, and diversification of markets. The result of these case studies suggest a more strategic approach to tourism that includes partnerships, 
value chain linkages, and embracing contributions towards these goals. Another Millennium Development Goal is to promote gender equality and empowerment for women, which eliminates gender disparities in primary and secondary education and at all levels. Within our book, a number of case studies demonstrated that tourism can promote gender equality and empower women. In Costa Rica, a small group of women were credited as agents of change and gained empowerment and reduced poverty through a small-scale ecotourism project. They also linked their project with other community producers, resulting in greater community benefit and empowerment. In Nepal, a private woman-owned operated trekking company is breaking down gender barriers and off offering employment opportunities for rural Nepalese women as tour guides. These are simply brief examples of the ability of tourism projects to cut across gender barriers and work effectively towards this goal. There are many opportunities that are out there and can set the example for sustainable tourism. Another Millennium Development Goal is to ensure environmental sustainability by integrating the principles of sustainable development into country policies and programs and reversing the loss of environmental resources while improving access to sh safe drinking water. I think we all know that the development of tourism is accompanied by significant challenges. The rapid growth in travel, the trend to travel farther and over shorter periods of time, and the preference given to energy-intensive transportation are increasing the non-renewable energy dependency of tourism, resulting in the sector's contribution of 5% to global greenhouse gas emissions, which is expected to grow substantially under a business-as-usual scenario. Other challenges include excessive water consumption, compared with residential water use, discharge of untreated water, the generation of waste, the damage to local terrestrial and marine biodiversity, and the threats to survival of local cultures, built heritage, and traditions. As the Green Economy Report has demonstrated, investing in a sustainable tourism industry can reduce the cost of energy, water, and waste, and enhance the value of biodiversity ecosystems and cultural heritage. The investment in requirement in conservation and restoration is small relative to the values of forests, mangroves, wetlands, and coastal zones, including coral reefs, which provide ecosystem services essential for the foundation of economic activities and for human survival. The value of ecosystems for tourists remains undervalued in many cases. What we realized in our review of sustainable tourism and its contribution to the Millennium Development Goals was that at best it was to split any conversation between environment and consideration of health impacts was non-negotiable. They go together. In a way, by doing so, we ignored the complexities that surround not only ecological systems, but the ideas behind sustainable tourism development. The health goals discussed uh, have a lot to do with reducing mortality by two-thirds among children under five, improving maternal health, reducing by three-quarters the ratio of women dying at childbirth, and to halt and begin to reduce the spread of HIV-AIDS and the incidence of malaria and other major diseases. When evaluating the relationship between a healthy planet and sustaining healthy people, communities, and nations, the intricacy of this vast web of interrelationships becomes even clearer. Sustainable tourism operations aspire to be more energy efficient and more climate sound, consume less water, minimize waste, conserve biodiversity, support cultural heritage and traditional values, support intercultural understanding and tolerance, and generate lo local income and integrate local communities with a view for improving livelihoods and reducing poverty, which in turn contributes to the health and quality of people's lives. And while the world itself is finite, increasing numbers of people are going to populate the world and travel to and fro. And this is going to make it possible for the world's peoples to get to know one another and impact one another in ways we have yet to imagine. The prospect of an international community increasing, transmigrating, and transmingling brings with it reason for optimism and pessimism. The optimism resides in the possibility that tourism, 
when practiced sustainably, can lead to greater cross-cultural understanding, peace, well-being, and prosperity. The pessimism resides in the possibility that tourism, when practiced unsustainably, can lead to cross-cultural misunderstanding, disease, and poverty. Nowhere is this dual-edge prospect more pronounced than in the context of human and environmental health. Sustainable tourism can promote health in its broadest ecological sense. However, it seemingly does just the opposite. Perhaps this is because tourists and those providing for them, wittingly or unwittingly, are characters of good things and bad. They're for themselves, their host culture, and the environment that nourishes them all. Much like migratory birds that carry new beginnings in the form of seeds, tourist and tourism operations transport from one continent to another and carry new beginnings and new seeds of one sort or another as they crisscross the globe. In the review of our case studies, we found that a sustainable tourism industry has an important role to play in fostering sustainable tourism in a way that also promotes health. Sitting at the crossroads of employees, travelers, and government agencies, the tourism industry is ideally situated to mitigate the spread of HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. What we also found was that fulfilling this responsibility can take place in three ways. Educating and protecting tourism workers, educating travelers and collaborating with government agencies, ministries, and healthcare providers to create policies and practices that promote health. The aim is to have multiple stakeholders involved to create implement and effective disease prevention measures. An ecological perspective provides a good vantage point from which government agencies can think about the relationships among health, education, economies, communities, and individuals. Government agencies should welcome partnerships between ministries of health, tourism, and education, as well as collaborations with businesses in the private sector, such as tourism operators. For example, the Ministry of Tourism in Barbados recently worked closely with the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association and the National HIV AIDS Commission to draft a policy that reduces discrimination and stigma and promotes supportive services and education among tourism workers on the transmission and, trans and prevention of HIV AIDS. As recognized in the Millennium Development Goals, human health is dependent upon biodiversity and on the natural functioning of healthy systems. Further, people depend on the planet for medicines that originate from diverse types of ecosystems. These ecosystems also help understand disease, support the food web upon which people depend, and reduce the risk of contracting infectious diseases. Humankind's dependency on a healthy planet is often obscured by affluence in the Western industrialized world, while the world's poorest countries have no such economic buffer to shield them from direct dependence on health of the planet and their own welfare. As such, the conservation of biodiversity becomes a centerpiece for sustaining health in all its manifestations. Threats to biodiversity and the consequences of its losses, including the obvious ecological consequences, as well as the impact on aesthetic, ethical, sociological, economical, various and other various aspects of our world re reveal the reality of this dependence. Therefore, rather than thinking globally and acting locally, I propose as a tourism industry, we become more place-based in our thinking and thinking locally, acting locally, and consider the global impl implications of all of our actions. David Orr has suggested that problems that occur all over the world are not necessarily global problems, and some truly global problems may be solvable with lots of local solutions. There are, of course, exceptions. Most notable is climate change, with no community or nation acting alone, being able to avoid climate change. However, a great deal of work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions can start with the household, with neighborhoods, with your communities, towns, and cities. Or also suggested a purely global focus tends to reduce the earth to a set of abstractions. Sometimes these abstractions blur what happens to real people in specific settings, perhaps even providing us with an excuse to consider these issues somebody else's problem. 
or lamented that having entered the global cash economy, the poor need cash at any ecological cost and the buyers typically deny any responsibility for the long-term results, which are mostly out of sight. Unfortunately, as a result, consumers have little to no idea of the full cost of their consumption. Inherent in sustainable tourism, or suggests we need to learn how to build local prosperity without ruining some other place, and to revitalize an ecological concept of citizenship rooted in the understanding that activities that waste resources, pollute or destroy biological diversity, and degrade the beauty and the integrity of the landscape are forms of theft from the commonwealth. There are few precious resources, if any substitutes, for the services that our natural capital invisibly provides. If it took $200 million of investment to recreate nature in Biosphere 2, imagine for a second how much it would cost to even begin to replicate these functions. Some scientists did. In 1977, or 1997, an article published in Nature reported on several scientists' attempt to conservatively quantify the value of the world's ecosystem services and natural capital. They estimated that about 38% of the value comes from terrestrial systems and mainly forests at about $5 trillion per year. But 63% of the value of ecosystem services is contributed by marine systems, which is nearly $21 trillion per year, most of, most of which is from coastal systems. Oceans affect us all, and imagine the ocean's values simply in the tourism industry alone. The connections are many and are varied. Let's take a look at just some of what the ocean actually provides us. Each year, the world loses 30 million acres of tropical rainforest. Biodiversity, our amazing variety of life on Earth, is being reduced to the lowest levels in human history. 
We have already wiped out one quarter of all bird species, 24% of mammal species, 11% of plant species, and one quarter of the world's coral reefs have been destroyed. Recently, the Stockholm Environment Institute found that impacts on the ocean could amount to two trillion annually by 2100, with over six billion of that in tourism losses alone. As natural capital and ecosystem services experience increased stress and become even less abundant in the future, we can only expect the value of nature to increase as well. The very nature of sustainable development emphasizes the integration of social, economic, and environmental pillars in health in the context of the environment is no exception. Given the dependency of the poor on biodiversity resources and the impact that climate change actually has on natural systems, this threatens the livelihoods, the food intake, and the health of poor people. And lastly, the Millennium Development Goal to develop global partnerships for development includes many ideas such as financial systems with a commitment to good governance, special needs of landlocked and small island developing countries, cooperation in the private sector, and including the benefits of new technologies. What we found in our research that partnerships, whether at a local, regional, national, or global level, have the capacity to assist in creating a more sustainable industry that can assist in meeting the Millennium Development Goals. Partnerships can be between organizations at a range of levels. It can be a mechanism to create and enhance local partnerships. Partnership opportunities exist on a number of mechanisms such as directly based at a community level, stimulating small businesses for long-term partners, or buying uh, from a community tourism-based uh, products and local tourism operations. The Global Sustainable Tourism Council, through its partnerships, can effectively support the Millennium Development Goals through a sustainable tourism industry. To date, the ind industry has been an undervalued player in helping to achieve these goals. Yet the GSTC can provide the necessary mechanisms and tools such as standards to accomplish these goals. With respect to building standards in tr sustainable tourism, partnerships have been used successfully to develop, establish, and manage a variety of ecotourism and sustainable tourism certification and accreditation programs. This collabor collaborative approach can benefit such programs through cooperation, mergers, benefits of marketing, and promoting eco-labels, eco economies of scale, and covering wide geographic areas. Briefly, the objectives of the GSTC create universal principles of sustainability for all types of scales of tourism. They promote the widespread adoption of global sustainable tourism standards. They ensure that the industry itself continues to drive conservation and poverty alleviation. They do this through the achievement of objectives such as developing and maintaining the global sustainable tourism criteria, providing assistance to destinations in approaching sustainability, promoting market access for certified businesses and destinations, and increasing knowledge through courses and training, such as recognition of compatible standards. They also award GSTC approved name and logo to create credible certification and certi certificate holders. Destination planning and development strategies are the first step towards a sustainable tourism industry, and these require partnerships. Our case studies found that in developing tourism strategies, local governments, communities, and businesses need to establish mechanisms for coordinating a variety of ministries, including that of environment, energy, labor, agriculture, transport, and health, to name a few. The Global Sustainable Tourism Council is developing a tourism destination criteria. The GSTC views this destination as a unified entity of communities, tourism-related activities, and cultural and ecological surroundings. The criteria for destinations considers the cumulative impact of all tourism activities and emphasizes the role of destination management in planning, voluntary initiatives, and regulation. So while many of our examples have demonstrated that sustainable tourism currently 
has some capacity to play a significant role in meeting the Millennium Development Goals. One of the common themes throughout our work is lack of sufficient and reliable data to accurately measure the impact and effectiveness of tourism in meeting and contributing to the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. Our research and case study examples suggest that at a policy level, tourism must be integral to economic, social, cultural, and en environmentally sustainable development and integrated into national development programs and poverty reduction strategies. There remains a need to address leakages using appropriate methodologies to measure economic linkages and establish programs in other economic activities such as agriculture, construction, manufacturing industries, or handicraft production. This is especially relevant to supply chain tourism products utilized. There is also a need to continue to support and implement the capacity building at local destinations, including improved employment policies and expanded education and training opportunities at all levels. Disseminating knowledge and good practices and to provide access to global marketplaces is a priority. Of course, the proverbial large elephant in the room continues to be the industry's impact on climate change. The tourism industry needs to acknowledge its contribution to climate change and take action to mitigate greenhouse gases, especially those generated from transport and accommodation activities. What we found in tourism businesses and activities are and can adapt to changing climate conditions by applying technology to improve energy efficiency and gaining funds to support the tourism industry in regions and countries. At an operational level, we need to unite around consistent, sustainable standards and support the Global Sustainable Tourism Council in this effort. The standards are, way, are there for the industry to rally forward in a major way, and these standards are evolving and must continually be reevaluated. and the industry should support this ongoing and challenging effort for all sectors of the industry. So what will it take for sustainable to work towards a greater good? It'll take a serious approach to work together to address the Millennium Development Goals in unison. The tourism industry has the power to make positive change. It is uniquely positioned, unlike many other industries, to take place in a place-based approach to conservation, poverty alleviation, and the social ills we face today. While I'm certainly not naive to believe that sustainable tourism is the panacea, to all challenges we face as a global society. I do believe it has the potential to support the health and well-being of its residents, biodiversity conservation efforts, cultural heritage preservation, while creating a mechanism for education, sustained economic development, equal opportunities for women, human rights, and ultimately working towards the greater good. And in the final words of Paul Hawken, if hope is to pass the sobriety test, then it has to walk a pretty straight line of re to reality. As long as business sees the environment as a rear guard action, it will consistently be in reactive mode, fighting off social concerns as if they were uninvited bill collectors. It is time for business to leapfrog the debate and take the action as an initiative, not in a self-serving and gratuitous pronouncements and awards, but in genuinely an open process of dialogue collaboration, reflection, and redesign. By being, dominant business, by being dominant, business is bringing woe and tribulation upon itself and society. It must submit to a process that is meditative, healing, and imaginative. Thank you very much for your time.